Get on Team Shaq with WinBet. We're playing parlays, boosting odds, and laying the wildest prop bets. Don't miss another game. Download the WinBet sport betting app today. Sign up today and win $200 in free bets when you place a $50 first-time wager on a straight bet or parlay. Offer subject to change, terms and conditions at winbet.com. Must be 21 or older and present in a state where play-through WinBet is available. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1-800-522-4700. This city on tennis lists. This is the show where every week either myself or my sidekick host bring a top tennis list on anything from any genre. The other person does not know what that list is ahead of time, and they try to guess items one through ten in real time, along with you, the folks at home. Today, my guest sidekick host is Andrew McKay from the Into the Portal podcast. Andrew, are you into the portal today? Or are you out? I'm one foot in, one foot out right now because my brain is a little scrambly, so I must have <laughs> some sort of uh, reaches from the netherworld coming into my life, regular life. Yeah, man, no, I'm stoked to be on. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I'm Andrew. I'm one half of the Into the Portal podcast. We're a, a duo of, um, I guess we would call ourselves paranormal investigators. We started off more as historical mystery investigators because we both uh, were super into history and university, and then it kind of evolved into much stranger things. So for the last four years, we've been talking about cryptozoology, myths, legends, uh, UFOs, and uh, everything in between. Extra weird. All the good shit. All the good shit. Yeah. So Into the Portal is actually... So I started podcasting in 2018 with Brandon for the Tennis Podcast. And right around that time, I was discovering new podcasters on Twitter mm -hmm. and the like. And Into the Portal was one of the first ones I followed, I remember. One of the first ones I listened to. And you guys kind of inspired me with like, I don't know, your brand and your music and your image has always been so cool. It's like, I want to be a podcast that people think of like that. And I'm oh being my sincere. God. Well, like, man, thank you so much, man. <laughs> that's, that's Plus the pod's great too. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. That's super motivating, man. Like that's, that's what keeps us going is, is that. So I really appreciate that. Of course. So I'm glad you're here, man. But I struggled a little bit, Andrew, I'll be honest, because I thought I'm going to have Andrew on from Into the Portal. He specializes in high strangeness, mm. paranormal, cryptids. I thought, well, I've already done cryptids mm -hmm. on this show. I've already done paranormal. I've already done... So, like, what can I bring that's new that the listeners have not heard, but that Andrew can still guess and put his okay. expertise to work? So, I think I found something kind of in the middle. You guys have done episodes on lost civilizations before. Yes, indeed. I scoured the web and I found us a list of the top 10 ancient lost cities awesome. throughout history. That is awesome. I legit wanted to be Indiana Jones when I was a little kid. Like I thought, I thought I could be like, I thought, you know, I didn't even think it was impossible just because it's a, a made up character. I was like, however old you got the build for it. <laughs> I just need the hat, buddy. <laughs> Ready to go. Give me the whip. We're going to do some whipping on this episode right. because the ancient lost cities, I pulled this from readersdigest.com. I also pulled some stats from worldatlas.com and of course, Wikipedia. And I got to ask you, what does it mean to be a lost city? Can you explain that in like one sentence? Yeah, in one sentence. For me, a lost city <laughs> is a place that's purported to have existed or exist that doesn't have full evidence to support it, so it is still lost. Yeah, that's a, that's a good definition. I, the definition I have here is that it's uh, hidden to the outside world. Usually the people who lived in such places left or died due to war or conquest, disease, economic hardship. And like you said, this list is actually a mix of cities that have been found, that have been discovered. Okay. So we like the ruins have been found and it's a mix of cities that have never been found and may not exist. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. There's legends of them existing. So we have a mix of both. I'm and nervous. This list, you're going to you're going to kill it. This list is not like most lists we do because it's not a true ranking. How do you rank lost cities? Yeah. Right. It's kind of just here's 10 of the most well-known lost cities out there. Sure. So I wouldn't worry too much about the order of the list. We're not going to offend any of these ancient people. No, ancient civilizations are not going to come back from the dead. And first thing they say is, where's Andrew McKay? Show us, direct us to his home so we can... <laughs> Just <laughs> chapped. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'd say these are the 10 cities that like the average person could guess several of them. Okay. Just knowing the names of them. Okay. So whenever you're ready, you can throw out a guess. Well, 
I guess my first one would be Nan Madol. And maybe that was too obscure of a first guess. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. I'm revisiting hashtag Nick's notes, and that I, I, is too obscure of a guess. Maybe we should edit that out, and I get a, I get a mulligan on that. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> we only edit out my mistakes, buddy. Fair enough. Have you come across uh, Nan Madol before? Have you, have you heard of this place before? No, I mean, maybe, and I just forgot, but it's not ringing a bell. It's a pretty cool place. It's off the coast of Indonesia, I believe, and okay. way out in the middle of nowhere, kind of a floating, almost like an island type half sunken city. So yeah, there's a lot of Atlantean vibes to it. Um, and its construction is completely, no one knows who built it or why. So it's super cool. Oh, I love shit like that. Yeah. Like that's that mystery. We have some of that today. And you also might have stumbled upon a guest there in passing in your... Mm. Well, I guess we would have to go for number two. Atlantean. Atlantis. Atlantis. Yes, sir. You knew that had to be on here. Of course. So again, the ranking doesn't really matter, but the way it's ranked here is number five, Atlantis. Number five. Would you agree this is the most famous kind of quintessential lost city out there? I mean, of course, 100%, or at least just the most obviously like mainstream, hotly debated, all uh, yeah, that yeah. jazz. And it's still so enticing, intriguing, like despite the horrible Disney movies and like whatever else, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Even though I liked it when I was a kid, I rewatched it again recently and I was like, ugh, this didn't age well. Didn't I'm age well. I'm glad you said that because I, when I was doing this list, I'm like, you know, my first introduction to Atlantis was that shitty Disney movie. And I saw it when I was probably, what, 10 or something. And yep. I was doing this list thinking, I'm going to go back and watch that. But now maybe, maybe I should not. <laughs> maybe I should not do that. Uh, where do you stand on Atlantis? I'm no expert. So it might surprise people. I'm not a lost civilization, lost city expert. But from my limited knowledge, it seems pretty probable that it never existed to me. Okay. What okay. do you think? I know that's not exciting, an answer. But no, I, I think like that's a totally reasonable answer. And that's Occam's razor. Like when you look at it in broad strokes. And then for me, I think that it's possibly just we are dealing with this weird conflation in modern days of this image of what it is with the concentric circles and the Plato's mm. interpretation and the yada, yada, yada. And I think it's like just all been kind of blown out of proportion. Maybe there's there is a nugget of truth, of course. Yeah. Whether it's sank or not. They did just find an uh, interesting road, actually, um, off the coast of Hawaii. And one of the researchers, really? th there's no connections really to Atlantis, but one of the researchers made a comment, wow, the road to Atlantis. And so it just kind of like caught on for that. Yeah. But who knows? It's like those clickbait headlines, like, of course, researcher says he found the road to Atlantis, even though it's not what he said. <laughs> but I think what you said there is interesting, where you mentioned the kernel of truth, right? Like, even if it's not Atlantis, as it's described in all the legend, like, I'm sure there's lost city. Well, there are lost cities like under the ocean that we don't even know about yet. Who knows? In fact, let me tell you about Atlantis. Okay. What I found about it. So uh, I, for each of these items, I said, have they been discovered? Yes or no? This is a no. And the geographic region is somewhere in the Atlantic, supposedly. Most of today's reputable scholars believe the sunken city of Atlantis is totally made up much to Andrew's chagrin. <laughs> However, ancient ruins are occasionally found beneath the sea, leading to sensationalized headlines that Atlantis has been found. Unfortunately, all archaeologists really have to go on as to location are the writings of Greek philosopher Plato from around 360 BC, who described the city as being near the Strait of Gibraltar. But his morality tale was most likely only an allegory for a wealthy, corrupt city that was destroyed by the gods for its hubris and sunk into the sea. So, as far as I could tell, the historic, like the first mention of Atlantis, or the only surviving record of Atlantis from ancient times was Plato's writing. Right. And that kind of launched Atlantis hunters. Yeah. If you will. I mean, that's definitely the juiciest nugget for, for most researchers is the, is the Plato work. But there's definitely other stuff. Yeah. Like yeah. if people really want to like go super deep into it and I'm just sort of like trying to jog my memory now, too, because we've definitely been like long prepping a series on Atlantis. So it'll probably be like five parts or something yes. ridiculous because it just has to be. There's too much mm -hmm. to even talk about. But there was some pretty interesting stuff coming out of Egypt. I believe there was like this one particular priest named like Salon, Salon of Sais or something like this. Uh, who listen had written show. about something similar. And that's where Plato got a lot of the, his information from. So it just, keep, it just keeps going further and further back. More vague, but keeps going back. So, yeah, who knows? That's a great note, too, that like I am absolutely scratching like the absolute surface of this thing. Like you said, a five part series would probably be easy to do. So, yeah, Atlantis, there's so much content out there about Atlantis. Yeah, it's super interesting. 
And it's a shame that Disney kind of ruined it for, for movies because like a real like drama series or something on HBO about Atlantis would be fucking cool. But oh, man. Yeah. Like rated yeah. R. Yeah. That would yeah. Be amazing. Of course, they had it in uh, the, the Aquaman too, like the new Aquaman. It was kind of like, yeah, whatever. Same thing. Uh, I didn't see it. Yeah. Is that yeah. is that where he's based or like his little. Yeah. Like his like where he's originally from. Yeah. And then he like goes back and it's like the whole, you know. Uh. Going back home, outsider thing. Pretty cliche. Yeah. I actually didn't mind it, though. I didn't yeah. Mind it. Yeah. Yeah. Cliche can be good, but I think cliche, I could have bet money on that. <laughs> well, last thing on Atlantis is that according to Plato's story, Atlantis fell out of favor with the gods and was submerged into the ocean. And as a consequence of Plato's writing and others, too, like you mentioned, it's Atlantis has become a byword for any and all supposed advanced prehistoric lost civilization and continues to inspire contemporary fiction from comic books to films. And that's the other part of this that we're not going to get into, but there's a whole mm. theory of lost advanced civilization that was part of Atlantis. You know, it's more than right. just a city. It's the people that supposedly live there as well. And what I love about the Atlantis story, too, I don't want to get too bogged down in this. This will end up being like no, a three-hour recording because you brought me on. This is what we do. I <laughs> this just... is why you're here, Andrew, to talk about this shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what I love about um, some of these ancient city stories, and it plays into so many other things too, with like creature accounts and stuff like that. Even Sasquatch actually ties into the idea of like past memory, like ancient memory. Like, and I, the idea, I guess what I'm trying to say is like the idea of a, of a civilization like this in a prehistory, and there is some sort of a carryover in literally like genetic memory that then ends up getting melded into all kinds of fanciful stories of cities and and how they look and like whatever. When in actuality, like there may have been something, but it was way before. It's like archaeologists aren't going to find that. You can't yeah, find this. Right, right, right. And then, of course, it comes to the people of like, you know, the, the evidence that just gets glommed onto by like creationists, which is very unfortunate. Being like, I mm. found a hammer in a 500 million year old piece of rock. <sighs> it's a fine line to toe. <laughs> and to your point, too, prehistory, right? Yeah. Uh, written history is... Correct me if maybe you know, but I think it's like 5,000-ish years that it's not a written long time. history goes back. Yeah, and humans were around long before that, just that we know of, and, who, and mm. there's a lot we don't know. So the idea that like we've been to this point in advancement in the long distant past, and now we're just kind of recycling through again. It's interesting. I don't know the likelihood, but it's, it's still interesting to fucking consider, yeah. Right? History repeats itself, shit. they say. And yeah. we just keep kind of... <laughs> yeah. I don't know. The kind of bummer about that is like if someone did stumble upon some sort of proof or evidence of this, mm -hmm. the likelihood of society as a whole accepting it <laughs> seems slim. Yeah. We don't like to accept any objective facts these days. Right. No. Or well, we, you and I do, I think. Yeah. But anyway. But yeah, no, but coming back to the Atlanta stuff, just not to get too off track, I, I wanted to mention too, I, like you probably listened to our episode on the Yanaguni Monument, the Atlantis of Japan, we called that yeah. one. Yeah. Which similar idea to Atlantis, mm -hmm. an island that ended up sinking or being lost or whatever. But this structure of Yanaguni that may or may not be man-made, I mean, most geologists, I think, are leaning to not man-made. And then my take was that it was possibly man-modified. And this would just be like mm. so far before any, like way before, actually, I'm not going to say it because it's my next guess, but way before like ah. other places mm -hmm. that are super, super ancient that would have been like modified by the hands of man who like aren't supposed to have these types of tools or wouldn't need to have been organizing to that degree and had these like massive palatial platforms for yeah, yeah. markets or whatever the hell they were doing there. But it's just um, it's too perfect for it to not be something. Yes. In my opinion. And that's what Atlantis is for me. You're, you're scratching an itch for me here. And I'm going to I'm going to steer us away soon just because I know I could talk about this forever. But like yes, one of the yes, things yes. I find most interesting is like the idea of prehistory intervention from other intelligent life, perhaps mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And the stuff you're saying, like, there's so much we don't know about history. The possibilities are fun to consider. That's yeah. all. Hundred percent. Yeah. All right. Well, that is Atlantis at number five. You said you had another guess. I'm interested to yes. know what that is. So my, my next guess is a place that I, I love and I'm still learning about. Gobekli Tepe. Hmm. That is also not on here. I'm looking at... No. I have like a few outside the top 10. It's not on here, man. I'm Damn. sorry. Damn. Yeah. Well, that's okay. That's fine. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's... Andrew, I'm sorry. Do you want <laughs> no, to do this again I... and I can alter the list for you? Well, I definitely want to come back on with other topics for sure. sure yeah. 
But no, I mean, hey, that's fine. I'm comfortable still guessing Gobekli Tepe, even if it's not on there, because it's a freaking cool place <laughs> that's ancient as shit. Yeah. <laughs> With crazy T structures and symbols that people don't know what they mean. And Have wow. you guys covered that one? No, but I'd like okay. to. Yeah, I'd like okay. to soon, for sure. <sighs> well, I get, okay, because there's some on the list that ha- like, have been discovered, though, too. Been I guess discovered. I should probably try to shoot for something like this. I guess... A discovered ancient city. Think biblical. Biblical. Oh, uh, well, actually, okay, I had something in my head there and then I lost it. What about Pompeii? Pompeii, yes. Pompeii had to be on here. Okay. Of discovered lost cities, it's one of the most well-known, and it is number four on this list. Pompeii, Italy. Number four. This is one that has been discovered, and it's a well-known story, but I'll go through it. It was a wealthy town with a population of around 11,000 in AD 79, which was a huge population for that time. They had many fine buildings and luxurious private houses with lavish decorations, furnishings, work of art. Organic remains, including wooden objects and human bodies, were entombed in ash because in 79 <laughs> AD... dark here on Tennis. That's quite the turn. I just <laughs> In the year 79, while the city residents were going about their activities, which could be, you know, Bathing in shit river or eating things <laughs> off the street or uh-huh. draining their blood out of their bodies to cure a common cold. While they're going about their activities, Mount Vesuvius erupted, violently blasting magma into the air for two days. The city and its inhabitants, who could not escape in time, were buried under ash at least six meters deep. God damn. Jesus, that's deep. That's deep. That's what she said. You ain't climbing out of that. No. No, no, no. <laughs> So, organic remains, including what objects and human bodies were entombed, over time they decayed, leaving voids that archaeologists found could be used as molds to make plaster casts of unique and often gruesome figures in their final moments of life. So, I read that and think archaeologists have kind of reanimated people that died. It's like an archaeologist's dream, though, to find something like that, you know? That's an absolute archaeologist's wet dream, for sure. Maybe yeah. not the Indiana Jones-type archaeologist you know the, a real archaeologist yeah a real one i mean i can't think of a better day for an archaeologist than to dig six meters deep and by six meters you're thinking man i'm i'm way in here there's got to be nothing here we got to move to the next site to try digging there because six meters is really deep but finally bing bing your shovel hits a toe bone or something right and you dig out these really well preserved people in their final moments before being burnt alive it's pretty wild really yeah I mean, poor Pompeians. Is that what they were called? I don't know. That, it sounds right. Sure. But this city was actually forgotten for over a thousand years yeah. until it was rediscovered in 1592 while they were digging for a canal. So they weren't even searching for this city. However, no major excavation was done until 1860. But despite that, so that's what, almost 200 years ago? Still up to a third of Pompeii remains buried. So a third of the city remains buried after almost 2,000 years. And it's now one of the most popular tourist attractions in Italy, with approximately 2.5 million visitors annually coming to see these poor Pompeians. It makes you wonder, like, what kind of treasures are still potentially hiding under there. Because it was a pretty wealthy city. It was a very wealthy city. So it's like if a third of it, you said a third is still buried? A third of the city is still buried. It's like, that's a lot. Yeah. I just wanted to, like, look up a picture of it here because I haven't seen it for a while. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do the same. Damn. Very pretty. We should go to Pompeii. Yeah, and I'm seeing some of these fucking bodies, man. These bodies are like little statues in the ground. Are you seeing those? Yeah, that's weird. Like you go there and you see these bodies. Oh, that's weird. And there's kids. Man, I want to go here though. Me too, (laughs) dude. Yeah, it looks crazy. Um, But you know, that third of the city that's still buried, they're going to unbury that someday and there's going to be like Nintendo Switches and shit in there. This is one of those cities that advanced beyond our years, millions of years right. ago. Well, I'm glad I at least got one, uh, one other one here. Yeah, you'll get more. That's probably going to be, a, that will probably cap it off for the 10, to be honest. No. Okay. I'm not feeling so hot right now with this list now. Think about this part of the world, still, not mm-hmm. far away from Pompeii, geographically. There is a very famous book, The Very Famous War, <laughs> in this city. Come on, Andrew. 
<laughs> you're just you're catching me at the end of a brew day, a long day, and I'm just feeling like I'm just dropping the ball here, Nick. I think every day is brew day for you, isn't it? Well, most days, every other day. <laughs> I'm <laughs> shit. I definitely I'm feeling like a bit of a jackass here historically for sure. Cause I, I came on here and I was like, I work today. I was like, okay, I'm gonna brush up on my paranormal for this. I'm looking at UFO stuff. Oh, I misled you, man. I'm brushing up on my <laughs> On my cryptids and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I had to throw you a curveball. You did. Let me ruminate on that one a little bit. I was going to throw out another one that just I had in the back of my head. Okay. But Machu Picchu? Machu Picchu. Yes, sir. It's number one, in fact. That's number one. Yeah, number one. Damn. Those Inca. Yeah, so we're hitting all the big ones here. Like, I think all the ones we've talked about so far, people have at least heard the name, even if they don't know anything about it. Mm-hmm. So Machu Picchu is in Peru. It is a discovered ancient city that belonged to the Incas. It's located, and people should look up pictures. You've probably seen these pictures if you don't remember, uh, but look up a picture of Machu Picchu. It's 2,000 meters atop a mountain crest above a valley in Peru. Really impressive looking. It was built in the 1450s for Pachacuti, which sounds like a Pokemon, an Inca emperor. (laughs) Pachacuti. The city only existed for about 80 years, but the Incas, in contrast with the Mayans, had no written language and no European visited the site until the 19th century, so far as known. There are therefore no written records of the site while it was in use, which is, again, fascinating, right? That is actually insane. Makes the imagination run wild. Very strange. The city was abandoned in the 16th century after the arrival of the Spanish conquistadors. Those damn conquistadors. It's bastards. Although the lost city was not actually lost to the locals, its ruins were discovered in 1911 by an American historian while searching for the legendary Vilcabamba. Vilcabamba? Yeah. Did you That's know that one? a fun thing to say. No. Yeah, Vilcabamba. It's fun to say. In 2007, Machu Picchu was voted one of the new seven wonders of the world in the Worldwide Internet Poll, which me and Brandon covered on episode 123 in the archives. <laughs> Do you watch a lot of ancient aliens or anything like that? Just totally random. Not lately, but I've seen dozens of episodes before, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, same. Not lately, but I've just, for some reason, that just like sparked my memory of a a story of like there being some argument for like this weird triangulation connection between like these like mummies that they found, like not at Machu Picchu, but like in Peru on that sort of same Mm. elevation or whatever. And I don't think it was connected to like the star child skull. I got to revisit that. Maybe we can do another top 10 on like crossover, like archaeology, paranormal or something. I don't know. Yeah, dude. I mean, you're reminding me too from ancient aliens. I don't know if it's Machu Picchu. It could be Egypt or some other place, but mm. they've found like symbols between different sites in different cities that are like thousands of miles apart and the symbols match. Right. And like that shit, something's up with that. <laughs> <laughs> Something's up with that. <laughs> Something is up with that. 100%. <laughs> we agree on that. <laughs> Some fucking conspiracies here. Yeah. Do you ever wonder what would happen if, well, if... If you give a dad a podcast. I'm what you call a nerdy fan. I, I nerd out at this stuff. Hardcore. You'll hear me talk about anime on here. You'll hear me talk about Power Rangers. You'll hear me talk about wrestling on here. Okay. I had an axe handle with a twisted T on it. There is <laughs> right after that twisted T video went viral. And man, they went out and grabbed it and smacked it in the head with it. It was so... That's great. I'd like to think of this podcast as a nostalgia moment for me. It's a show where I can talk about whatever I want. I'm a, I'm a human and I'm a chiropractor. There was a picture of me. It looked like I was on the side of a ramen box over in China. But... <laughs> so I took my kids with me to Comic-Con. I thought that was really cool. Well, I don't know if my wife should listen to this podcast. We'll cut that part out. <laughs> you know, you be like, and then Robert said this. <laughs> if you give a dad a podcast, available now on all podcasting platforms. Okay, I'm ready for another one, I guess. Okay. I still can't think of the one you're trying to hit me on, though, so I'm, it'll come to me. You're going to hit yourself in the head when you hear it. 100%. Because biblical, you said biblical. Well, there's also, and so I'm that's thinking, a separate one. Biblical. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Biblical, it's like the quintessential biblical town, or at least one of them. <laughs> the quintessential biblical town. <laughs> <laughs> and I did, what, you mean like the white picket fence biblical town? Like you really want to move there? That's what you mean? 
No, absolutely <laughs> fucking not. I mean, like, when people think cities that are mentioned a lot in the Bible. I still don't have that, but the one I had written down here okay. is another, I believe, Disney movie. El Dorado. El Dorado is... I know the movie you're thinking of, and that is an animated film from maybe DreamWorks or something. It's not okay. Disney. Okay. That was a big one in my childhood. Did you see that one? Yeah, I don't really remember it, but I definitely loved, liked it when I saw it as a kid. I watched it like maybe three or four years ago with my kids, and it is like surprisingly PG-13. <laughs> a little bit. Really? There's a lot of sex implications. and All right. Yeah, which I'm here for, hey? Why fine, not? But that just caught me off guard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the people listening, it had the guy with the blonde hair, the guy with the dark hair. They're searching for the city of gold, which is El Dorado. And that city is number nine on the top ten. Much like other cities we've talked about, it's actually never been discovered. Right. It's uh, supposedly in Spain, belonged to the Musica people. El Dorado is Spanish for the golden one. It was a term used by the Spanish in the 16th century to describe a mythical tribal chief of the Musica people who, as an initiation rite, covered himself with gold dust and submerged in Lake Cotavita. All right. Now, Andrew, how often do you cover yourself in gold dust and submerge yourself in a body of water? Every Wednesday afternoon. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no. That would be sweet. Yeah. We did cover the lost city of the monkey god on uh, an episode. I don't know if you listened to that one. And like, yeah. that, to me, that was like possibly El Dorado. Yeah. You know, I mean, they didn't, they hadn't find the, the full, you know, city of gold yet. But there was definitely a lot of gold uh, artifacts and things like that. And yeah, I mean, it's all in the same neck of the woods there. So yeah, well, there was a British explorer, Sir Walter Raleigh, who mm. conducted two ill-fated expeditions to find El Dorado around 1600, second of which ended in the death of his son. He actually was beheaded for fighting <laughs> with, with the people that killed his son, which were Spanish people. So there's been people like that asshole that have tried to find El Dorado, but as far as definitive proof, El Dorado remains a mystery. And some people don't think it was a city at all, but a man or a chief. And since the 19th century, most historians dismiss the city as a myth, ah, yeah. which I don't like that. But yeah, but imagine having so much gold around you that your city becomes known for gold and you have enough gold to cover yourself in gold dust and jump into the lakes and shit. It's wild. Yeah. The Maya and the Aztecs, those guys had so much fucking gold. And like, it was so much that even when they hid like half of it or however much they hid when the, because uh, that was the thing. It's a misconception that when Cortez showed up, everyone was like, word, gods are back. Yeah. Awesome. Like they were definitely like a little bit skeptical of that. And there's some people that think that they definitely were like, you know, just let's be safe here. And maybe we'll, we'll show them what they think is everything we have. And it's actually only like 10%. Mm. And the Spanish said that they walked into like their, you know, their treasure hoard from uh, Montezuma. And it was like the most gold, the most precious gems, the most everything they'd ever seen before. And that may have only been like a fraction of what they actually had. So the concept of the idea of there being like actual full out buildings made entirely of gold which sounds so ridiculous and mythical, is like not out of the realm of possibility at all. Yeah. There was enough. Dude, what a badass thought that is. <laughs> and imagine that discovery, you know, under the rubble somewhere. Right. Buildings made of gold. Like, man, I hope we get to see something like that someday. It's just... Yeah. Me too. Crazy. Me too. So badly. Okay. We're on to other stuff here. Let's do a quick recap here. Yeah. Okay. Let's do a recap. So number nine is El Dorado. Number five is Atlantis. Four is Pompeii, and one is Machu Picchu. Now, we're going to hone in on the biblical one. This is a lame hint, but there's been a movie with Vin Diesel with the name of the city and the title of the movie. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a Vin Diesel movie outside of Fast and the Furious. And by the way, no one's going to hold it against you that you haven't seen a Vin Diesel movie. Including yeah, well, probably, yeah, just Vin All Diesel. Right. Babylon. Babylon. Oh, Come yeah. on. Babylon. What movie was that? Babylon AD. Never heard of it's it. It's a movie. But look, you don't have to have heard of that movie to have heard of Babylon. But think about like the whore of Babylon. You've heard that, right? Of course. Of course. Yeah. A lot of right. famous Bible stories come from the this. The Hanging Gardens is kind of the, the, the phrase yeah, that I the think Hanging of. Hanging Gardens. The, yeah. Right. 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 So Babylon, whether or not any of us believe the Bible, and I don't, but Babylon was an actual place in Iraq, mm -hmm. has been discovered. It was the civilization of the Babylonians. And the word baby is also in the word Babylonians and Babylon. Mm. Just saying, that's the kind of fun facts you guys are here for. 
simple stuff that I need to remember. <laughs> Baby lawn is how it's spelled. I'm just saying. <laughs> so simple. In the ancient land of Mesopotamia, this thriving and powerful city once stood. Famous for its appearances throughout the Bible, the actual site of Babylon existed in what is now Iraq, about 50 miles south of Baghdad. After being conquered by the Persians and then the Greeks, Babylon, or Baby Lawn, eventually fell into ruins and was covered by the desert. The last known record of habitation of the town dates from the 10th century AD. It has been estimated that it was the largest city in the world at one time. It was perhaps the first city to reach a population of above 200,000 people, which now just sounds fucking nuts, right? Because like yeah. 200,000 people is like a medium-sized city in yeah. you know, this part of the world. But there was a time where, and this was in the late 1600s when they say that it crossed 200,000. So finally, well, to German... be a fly on the wall, all right? Ahead. Sorry to interrupt you, but just no, like, no, no. just could you imagine like to be, I, and we always think that when we record this kind of stuff on Into the Portal where it's just like, I wish so bad. Like if I could have a time machine, I wouldn't want to like physically be present. I just want a picture time machine. I just want to be able to like go back and see what that 200,000 people like packed into Babylon looks like. Yeah. So right. badly, so badly. That's a great point because then you don't have to actually physically go there and die from a head cold or something. Uh, you can actually right. like see it. And that's the other thing too is 200,000 people in one city had never happened before. Not even in like ancient Rome. Pretty impressive. Yeah. German archaeologist Robert Coldaway excavated the city in 1899. But Iraq ruler Saddam Hussein boo, <laughs> attempted to reconstruct parts of Babylon and further military occupation damaged the ancient site. But today's archaeologists are hoping to preserve it. I hope so. Now, Andrew, big Bible reader, I assume. I assume you're tight with God. <laughs> I am not so tight with God. <laughs> well, I know you're just being humble here because I know that right. you know everything I'm about to tell you, which is that in Christianity... Babylon symbolizes worldliness and evil. And in the book of Genesis, it describes a united human race speaking one language, migrating to Shinar to establish a city and tower, the Tower of Babel. God halts construction of the tower by scattering humanity across the earth and confusing their communication so they are unable to understand each other in the same language. Hmm. So, Mr. Smarty Pants, there you go. That's why we all speak different languages, because God spread us apart from Babylon. It's the only thing that makes sense. It's just the only thing that makes sense, right? Hey, you don't have to tell me. No, that's interesting, though. Yeah. I don't think I've ever really focused on Babylon before. So there you go. A little info on Babylon. So that's great. One last thing is Babylon's mentioned elsewhere in the Bible. It's personified by the whore of Babylon. There's tales of riding on a scarlet beast with seven heads and ten horns drunk on the blood of the righteous. That's, that's all part of the Whore of Babylon legend. It's pretty rough stuff. Did I read that right? Riding on a scarlet beast with seven heads and ten horns. Now, wait a minute. Andrew, this thing has seven heads, right? That's a, that's a strange amount of horns. Yeah. That means that some of these heads are missing horns, right? Or... Oh, there's one they horn. They all have one horn, and there's an extra three for no reason. Or one head has ten horns, and the other six heads don't have horns. Ten horns on one head is not something you want to encounter in any cryptid creature and no. or interdimensional monster. No. <laughs> All right, man. Okay, on to another one here. Do you have a guess? If not, I can give you a hint. I have a few others written down here that I... Okay. But another one that I feel like is still kind of debated because it may, have, like, it may or may not be what he says it is, but what about Troy? Troy, that's the one I was trying to tell you earlier about the war in an ancient... Oh, yeah, yeah an ancient okay, war. I was going to think in a different way, but yeah, okay, we're... Yeah, yeah. yeah Brad Pitt naked and waking up in the of thing. Of course. Skirt, <laughs> leather skirts. I don't, I don't know why my brain Come went on. there. Right? Brad Pitt, hell of an ass. <laughs> Troy, its geographic region is Turkey. In ancient Greek literature, Troy is portrayed as a powerful kingdom of the heroic age, a mythic era when monsters roamed the earth and gods interacted directly with humans. Fun times. Yeah. The city is said to have ruled the Troid until the Trojan War led to its complete destruction at the hands of the Greeks. The story of its destruction was one of the cornerstones of Greek mythology and literature featured prominently in the Iliad and the Odyssey, as well as numerous other poems and plays. Now, until the 19th century, scholars regarded the Trojan War as entirely legendary. However, starting in 1871, Heinrich 
Schleiman, and Frank Calvert mm -hmm. <laughs> excavated the site of the classical era city under whose ruins they found remains of numerous earlier settlements. So, yeah. according to this, they've discovered this city. And I love that story because until 1871, 150-something years ago, they thought this was fiction. They thought this was legend. Yeah. And then they discover it, which goes back to what we were saying earlier about Atlantis and stuff like that. Like, who knows what is out there and we just haven't discovered it yet. Yeah, no, 100%. And this one is like, yeah, this is such a perfect example of this. Schliemann or Schliemann or whatever the guy's name was, the German. <laughs> he was super wealthy, so he had the ability to do this. And I wish there was more people doing that. I mean, there's a few, I guess, that like the Richard Bransons of the modern world that want to do whatever weird ocean discovery stuff. But yeah, no, this guy just like, I can't even remember exactly how he ended up pinpointing this excavation site. Yeah, but they found everything from what he claimed to be the jewels of Helen of Troy that he gifted to his wife at the time. That's fucking incredible. There was a bunch of other like really strange things about that story where it was just like almost too good to be true. But there was there were like independent archaeologists there to like verify what was happening. And it wasn't just like a rich guy like wanting to have a cool story. Yeah. And yeah, that's wild. And that's why I love the stuff like the Yaneguni Monument, because it's like mm -hmm. it's underwater. We can't really say if it was on land like that. You know, anyway, it's just so perfect. Yeah, yeah. It's so yeah. perfect when this shit happens. Keeps things alive. Yeah, totally. And the Helen of Troy thing uh, with the jewels, I don't know where that stands now if they said that is or is not definitively or, you know, probably that. Right. But like, let's say it is. Imagine finding that and holding that in your hand and just feeling the power of like, this thing in my hand has been part of one of the most famous stories in human history for thousands of years and no one thought it was real and I'm holding it in my hands right now. Like the power of that right. gives me a chubby. I'll be honest. Seriously. <laughs> and this is the thing that I hate too because it's like I'm not a religious person but when I think back to like ancient civilizations and this kind of stuff like you said like this was a city that was supposed to have existed in a time when mm -hmm. these ancient Greeks they could converse with the gods or some people could or there was more connections to things. And yeah, that's probably just like belief and people truly like believe these things. But I always like to entertain the idea that perhaps with like a different set of epistemologies, with a different set of like not getting freaking our brains hammered with the, every different wave out there from modern technology and everything else that maybe yeah. we were able to perceive other things yeah. that would be called, quote unquote, the gods or the whatever or the whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, of course, ancient aliens latches onto that and it's like all aliens, and whatever. But yeah, everyone's got their thing. About ancient aliens too, side note, it's like, if people might laugh at me, but I think there's some compelling evidence in that show. Mm. No, for sure. That because it's been so memeified, it's like a joke now that you, people can't yeah. even take it seriously, which is a shame because there's some stuff yeah. in there that's worth talking about. But 100%. I mean, they do it to themselves because they just need the content. Yeah. Right. So it's just like, hey, we've got this they stuff that's like really now. legit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, of course, it's like, because yeah, you're right. There's some stuff that is genuinely interesting, genuinely worth debating. And then a lot of filler that kind of just yeah. to the casual observer discredits it but like if you want to pick out the nuggets yeah there's definitely they're definitely there for sure well about troy though uh the city was devastated by earthquakes around 500 a.d that's why it fell to ruin and as for the trojan war specifically archaeologists have found evidence of the battle but still not clear if it's from the trojan war talked about in the iliad and the odyssey but they do think the Trojan horse story, the famous Trojan horse story where they gave the horse as a gift to the other side and they were hiding inside of it. We've all heard the story. They think that was probably a myth. Yeah. But who knows? Sir Lancelot Galahad and I leap out of the rabbit. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's too bad. It'd be great if it was true. I mean, yeah. no way to know, though, because the wood wouldn't be around, I suppose. No. <sighs> mm, no. It's a shame. Or maybe they use something else besides wood, but probably not. Hmm. it's probably gone forever if it ever existed at all yeah yeah all right man you ready you're, ready you're for doing more? pretty good yeah you just need four left and i was gonna say one of them i did mention earlier in passing and didn't even catch Ooh. myself yeah shit i didn't pick up on it i remember that funny well. word that you said was fun to say <laughs> you probably don't remember the word but you remember that yeah. part of the today? You do realize that there's <laughs> cannabis stores in BC as well, right? Like Andrew's maybe not exactly. You don't say, are you sure? Are you talking about BC Canada? There's yeah. marijuana stores there? I don't know. We might need to check the, yeah. check the facts on that one. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> you know what popped into my... Okay, I, I'm, I got to backtrack here because I just remembered. I was, sure. was going to say something you were talking. I'm like, you know what movie I thought of when you gave me the freaking hint about, about, about Vin Diesel? Huh. 
The only movie I could think of was Chronicles of Riddick. I Chronicles of Riddick. R- I was gonna say Riddick. I'm like, is that a place? Yeah. Is that a place? I've never seen the movie, man. And then I would be immediately like, I need you to cut this up. I'm looking now to see if like, did, did has no one heard of this movie but me? Have I been Mandela affected? Yeah, dude. I don't think this movie exists. No, it's here. Babylon AD. <laughs> Wouldn't that be? This is why I find out that I'm like starting to get like early onset dementia or something. Is thinking that this movie existed, or it's just like yeah, it's just a straight up yeah Mandela effect, paranormal stuff happening here. Babylon yeah. AD. Look it up, folks. You know what that kind of led me into though, because like I was thinking, trying to think biblical and whatever else, and then I thought of these two places, and I'm like, is it one place? Is it two places? I didn't pay attention in Sunday school, and I didn't go for very long. But like Sodom and Gomorrah. That's a good guess. It's not on here, and. They are two places, I think. Right. And yeah, like side by side, maybe. Yeah, I don't know what happened to those guys. Are they still? <laughs> those guys still open. They're, surely they're not still around, right? Those guys still open. <laughs> they got Wing Wednesdays at the strip are those club. Guys still... Yeah. Sodom and Gomorrah. You got to think somebody's opened a friggin' strip club called Batman. Oh, there has to be something. I did a search for Sodom and Gomorrah and so much shit came up. There's a movie, there's a show, there's a restaurant. There's a book. And yeah, it says here, two legendary biblical cities destroyed by God for their wickedness. Ah. So yeah, why aren't these guys on here? Hmm. 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 Too dirty, too naughty. The Quran also mentions it. Okay, so they're not on there. Okay. What about the ancient... You're going to say something? No, I was just starting to read about Sodom and Gomorrah, and I said (laughs) I'd better close this tab or I'm not going to pay attention to Andrew. So (laughs) We'll have to do a Sodom and Gomorrah episode, top 10 nastiest (laughs) things that happened there. (laughs) <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, fucking deal deal oh man this is a would be another discovered place but what about um the city of tikal Mm-mm. Ah, okay okay scratch it take it off no i, I take it back mulligan nope. that it's happened it happened <sighs> see Damn it. this is like me when i play golf too every shot shit mulligan do you guys really want to listen to End of the Portal? I mean, does this guy even know his shit? Right? Does he even know what he's talking about? He's gotten so many wrong guesses today. You're teeing it up like I'm a fucking, like, like I'm a, like I'm a PhD <laughs> history professor or something. Hey. I mean, I'm, at least I'm naming places, I guess. I'll, I'm going to pat myself on the back no, for Hey, that. you are naming places. That's a fact. You are naming things. You're saying words. They're words. English. I mean, I'll have to play it back to, like, confirm that for myself, but I think I am. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It's possible you're not even here and I'm just having this conversation with myself. Just like the dementia thing. So, just who knows? The dementia thing. So, listen, Andrew, I have yeah. another hint for you. All right. Well, I'm just going to give it to you because you'll never guess it. It's that word I said earlier that you said sounded fun, which is Villa... Oh, yeah, the Bibu... Bibu... Villa Camba. Villa Camba? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> bibu, 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 bibu. No, that wasn't it. That wasn't it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hang on. We, you said you were speaking English earlier. Now you're just speaking robot. Right. Bebo okay, well, Bebo is not. It's not Bebo Bebo. It's a Villacamba. 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 Peru. That sounds like a resort. Well, actually, you uncultured swine. It's the <laughs> lost city of the Incas <laughs> that was the final emperor's final refuge before being overthrown by Spanish invaders, sir. So it's just his big house, the villa. I think it might be connected to Machu Picchu or something. Okay. It might not be connected. I don't know. But no, okay. they're both in Peru. Mm. The archaeologist Jean Savoy rediscovered the site in 1964, and even today, Villacamba hasn't been fully excavated. Recent research has even discovered evidence of pre-Incan inhabitants called the Wari. The Wari. Yeah, so there's ancient civilizations that we don't even know about, perhaps, that lived there before the Incas. Well, there has to be. That's it. Has to be. That's it. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks for giving me that one. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Villacamba. Villacamba. Bibu Bibo. Yeah, the Bibo Bibo. Let me read off a few that are not in the top 10, but they're just outside the top 10. Maybe it'll jog your guessing here. Yeah, hopefully it's not the only one I've left. What about the ancient city of Camelot? The legendary city of Camelot. That's a good one, right? See, no, that's a great one. That wasn't quite in my, on my linear timeline list. I wasn't really thinking ancient, more medieval, but I wasn't really thinking ancient. But that's, that's a good one. Well, that's, that's a, a good, good one. one. I wish it was really on good. here so we could talk about it more. But yeah, yeah. It's not. Memphis, Egypt. Okay. Not Memphis, Tennessee. They're still around, I think. They're there. Yeah, the Grizzlies are great. <laughs> the Grizzlies are great, and Elvis was something at one time, too. Yeah. Exandu, China. Exandu. Uh, Tanis, Egypt. Oh, shit. Okay, that was on my list. And Petiti. 
Yeah, so those guys are not in the top 10, but they're close. Now, let's narrow down on these last few. So there's a place in Cambodia that has been discovered. Oh, shoot. Is this Cambodia or is it Angkor Wat? Angkor, yeah, Cambodia. Yeah, that is number seven. Really cool ruins there, man. Like, those are such sweet. I looked at photos. Really, really, really cool structures, yeah. I encourage listeners to check the show notes because I'm putting pictures to all these lost cities Mm. in there. So you can look at a link to see those, but really badass ruins there. The ruins of this ancient city are located amid forests and farmlands to the north of the Tonal Sap Lake of Cambodia. It housed the civilization of the Khmer Empire. Maybe you know how to say that. Khmer. I don't know. K-H-M-E-R. Yeah, close enough. The Kermit Empire, maybe. It was the capital city of that empire. The city and the empire flourished from the 9th to the 15th centuries. It's considered to be a hydraulic city because it had a complicated water management network, which was used for systematically stabilizing, storing, and dispersing water throughout the area. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. They're on top of it, man. 9th through 15th century, so a long time ago, but they had a whole plumbing system worked out. It's a good thing that was water they were using and not peanut butter. It would have been more difficult, I think. (laughs) I think so. To build the hydraulic peanut butter city. Yeah. I think we're all better off. But also much cooler if they could have pulled that off. Yes, but where would we be as a society now if all this time peanut butter had been used instead of water? (laughs) Questions. What an existential question that is, eh? (laughs) I'm just asking questions, that's all. Peanut butter replacing... Wow. Yeah. You got me. The scientists are working on theories about that. Oh, yeah. The water network I mentioned that they did have is believed to have been used for irrigation in order to offset the unpredictable monsoon season and also support the increasing population because at its peak, the Angkor area may have supported between 750,000 and 1 million people, which is a lot for that time. It's a lot for now, but it's definitely a lot for that time. Massive. They had a rebellion against Siamese authority, resulting in the 1431 sacking of Angkor by, I can't say this word, Ataya, causing its population to migrate south to Longvek. So that's when it was deserted. Now, the temples of the Angkor area number over 1,000, ranging in scale from nondiscreet piles of brick rubble scattered through rice fields to the Angkor Wat, said to be the world's largest single religious monument. There you go. Angkor, Cambodia. Never been. Definitely on the bucket list. Yeah. You just need two left. I believe in you. I don't know why. Think about a city. (laughs) Sorry. No, I don't know why you believe in me. That's what I'm saying. (laughs) Oh. Oh. (laughs) That's it. Yeah. I don't really. It's just something you say. Sure. Okay. I don't really believe in you. To be clear, just to be perfectly clear, Andrew, I do not believe in you. Okay, great. But I am going to hold your hand. Mm. across the finish line. Thank you. I appreciate that. There is a well-known lost city that has been discovered and it's built into the walls, the hills of this place. Yeah. Are we talking southwest uh, of the United States? No. Oh, okay. Because there's some interesting structures there too. There certainly is, but this is not in That are the city structures too. Okay. Um, I can picture it in my head. Hmm. Can you maybe give me like a little bit of a, like a Geographical rain, more of a like a... Western Asia. I'll just give it to you, man. It's Petra. Oh, Petra. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Petra. <laughs> People are yelling at their phones. So I had to give it to you. I should have been more prepared for this. I mean, how could no, I have been? Though? No, the whole point, the whole point of this show is that you're not prepared. So it's I actually know. absolutely fine. <laughs> but I would have like, it's like studying for the fucking LSAT or something, right? It's like I would have just done everything and I didn't think I need to, you know? This is part of the fun, is it? discovering this journey together your struggle is other people's enjoyment listen good so don't worry i hope so i promise i'll redeem myself too well i won't hold you to that but we'll see okay <laughs> petra jordan is number eight the ancient city may have been constructed around the sixth century bc that's a long time ago that might be the most ancient we've talked about in fact yeah sixth century yeah sixth century bc so six th- that's yeah oh, eight thousand years ago ish yeah Still not as old as Gobekli Tepe, but still pretty old. No, no. And maybe not as old as Atlantis or any of these other places we haven't found yet. That's right. Petra was a magnificent city intricately carved into the stony hills of the Jordanian deserts and featured a water conduit system. People should look at pictures of this place. It's incredible. Petra was a commercial hub and a trade route between the Dead Sea and the Red Sea, 
Which those fucking rhyme. I mean, come on. Dead Sea, Red Sea. That had to be on purpose, right? <laughs> Almost. I mean, I know those aren't new seas and people have heard those seas before, but to see them side by side in a sentence, it's just like, it's too perfect. Dead Sea, Red Sea. It's like a Dr. Yeah. Seuss book. Yeah. <laughs> the Dead Sea, the Red Sea. <laughs> yeah. Said Sea, I see Dead Sea, Red Sea. Anyway. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, it was a trade route between those two seas for close to 2,000 years. So this place was a hustling, bustling place for a long time. Traders from Syria, Egypt, and Arabia met in the city to trade. At its peak, it hosted 30,000 people and featured gardens, theaters, temples, villas, and tombs. But all good things must come to an end, Andrew, because in the year 363 AD, Petra was partially destroyed by an earthquake, and 300 years after that, it was abandoned when the Arabs conquered it. But it was rediscovered in 1812 by Joanne Ludwig Burkhardt. Joanne. And you can visit it today in Jordan. I wonder if I, because I haven't actually, truthfully, like I haven't researched this. I've heard of it. I haven't mm-hmm. researched it in depth or anything like that. And anytime there's any almost borderline cave structures, right? Like dug into things. I'm always wondering like how extensive it could be or maybe could have been that you can't reach anymore. You know what I mean? Mm. So I'd like to look into this a little bit further. It's kind of like what they were. Well, it, there's, a, there's a bunch of different sort of structures like this around the world. But it just reminds me yeah. of uh, just to keep things paranormal here of the story of the lost civilization. Fa- well, artifacts of lost civilizations found in the Grand Canyon and some of the yeah. very much like man-made city structures that people purported to have found there that just keep running deeper and deeper into the into the rock. Yeah, it's really cool. And again, it's the theme of the episode, man. It's like we don't know what we don't know. Yeah. Who knows what's yeah. in there? Who knows how deep it goes? Who knows how deep it could go? All those unanswered questions are what keeps life spicy. That and, I don't know, but. Exactly. Petra is, uh, some of the structures there are built directly into the mountain, and it looks almost fake, like you couldn't enter the building, but you could. And they did. And they did for thousands of years, in fact. Keeping cool in the mountains, right? Yeah. Well, for the last one, you just see number 10. It is also a very mountainous place, and it's here in the United States. No shit. No shit. Hmm. It was this probably the one I was just thinking of a second ago, and now I can't remember the name of it, where I believe it's That's in the not Southwest. Grand Canyon. It is in the Southwest, though, isn't it? Colorado. Yeah. Mm. The Anasazi people built it. Mm. What's it called? <laughs> no. This damn ancient Anasazi, man. Do you want me to let you suffer, or do you want me to give it? You like watching me suffer. It's cool. I don't hate it. <laughs> watching people suffer is one of my favorite pastimes. Right. It's not specific to you, but you're included in it. Well, I appreciate it. It's fine. It's fair. Yeah. Damn it, dude. I can't think of it. It's on the tip of my tongue. Mesa Verde, Colorado. Okay. Is that the one you're thinking of? Like part of it. I swear I had a different name though. But am I correct though? It was built by the Anasazi? Or am I thinking of something else? Let's see. Um, I'm looking. It was home to the ancestral Pueblo people. Mm, okay. We might be thinking of a different place here. Now I'm curious what you're thinking. I'm pretty sure that those individuals are actually even more ancient ancestors of who mm. would become, or maybe I've got that backwards. Maybe it could have been Anasazi than the Pueblo people. Well, here, I'll, t- I'll tell you about it. And you tell me if this sounds like it. Okay. So Mesa Verde, Colorado has been discovered. It was a magnificent real life lost city hidden in the rocks. Rediscovered in 1888 by cowboy brothers looking for stray cattle. Did you hear that sentence? Cowboy brothers. Cowboy brothers were looking for stray cattle and they uncovered a magic fucking city. Or not magic, but a hidden fucking city. <laughs> magic. I don't know why I said magic. There was fucking <laughs> wizards coming out of every cave. There was like wands laying around everywhere. We don't know. We weren't there, but... <laughs> I love the idea of these cowboy brothers being like, well, I'll be goddamned. And they, you know, spit their tobacco and then... Clarence, we just found ourselves a fucking city, man. <laughs> so it was first excavated, though, as an archaeological site in 1909. And it's now a national park. With more than 5,000 sites, including 600 cliff dwellings, it is the largest archaeological preserve in the United States. It was home... See, maybe this is, this is for you, I think. Yeah. It was home for, of ancestral Pueblo people for 700 years, but it was abandoned in the 1200s as the people migrated to different areas following a period of social and environmental instability driven by a series of severe droughts. Okay, so it didn't actually mention it there, but I thought it was going to say that there were people before them, but... That's okay. 
the boring version for why they left because everyone who wants there to be a every exodus has to have a paranormal side too right yeah i prefer it yeah so i don't have a paranormal explanation no. but i do have a very dark explanation mm. because there's actually evidence of violence and cannibalism in central mesa Verde region while most of the violence which peaked in the 1200s is generally ascribed to infighting among mesa Verdeans, Archaeological evidence suggests that violent interactions also occur between Mesa Verdeans and people from outside the region. So it's not enough that these cowboys discovered this lost city in Colorado. They discovered a lost city full of people that also ate each other. Right. So, Dark stuff. Hey, I'm here for it. I love some of the, I'm, again, off the top of my head, I don't have anything like exactly concrete, but I love like some of the like indigenous stories that go along with some of these exoduses and like, you know, like these types of civilizations. And I think one of them, it's in regards to this, was that part of the reason for their, like the cannibalism, like infighting conflict was that there was like this figure that was like kind of like an inhuman entity, Mm -hmm. god like Mm -hmm. entity, demigod, you might call it, a figure known as the gambler. And this is like common amongst a bunch of different groups. I love that name. Yeah, and it, and it was basically like he would trick you into betting things away. They so would just trick things, trick you into taking things from you. And then this. Are you be... talking about the gambler or my first wife here? <laughs> you may have been Sorry. one and the same. <laughs> Good sir. <laughs> Don't know. Which then just, of course, led to a bunch of instability and people not having what they need. So then they were just yeah, killing each other, eating each other, doing whatever. Yeah. But whether or not that would have been like, and you know, I'm picturing like a legit however you want to call it, you've a demonic entity if you're Catholic or whatever, but it's something they're taking from them. And then it just brings about the entire collapse. It's yeah. creepy. Do you read Stephen King at all? I do. I haven't recently, but he has a book called Needful Things that is one of my favorites. And it's not ancient times, it's modern times, but the, the, the main uh, antagonist, his whole mission is to basically destroy cities and societies right. like this. So that's what it reminds me of. Maybe it's drawn from that, but I do find it fascinating the idea of like these cities being lost by design or by intervention, right? Yeah. Same way they could have been built by design or intervention. A hundred percent. Yeah. Like you said, like by from more advanced beings or creatures or whatever. I will say like, I I know we're kind of getting, I'm we're we've done the 10. I didn't do as well as I, I thought I would. No. But some of my favorites just didn't happen beyond there. And I definitely thought they would be like for sure. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. No, it's not your fault. Like, isn't I said, I'm sorry, Andrew. Forgive me. I do not forgive you. Unforgiven. I think like some of yours are probably more interesting. Like the ones on this list are like the mainstream. Like what are the 10 most likely to be recalled by an average person? Right. Whereas some of yours are probably a little more obscure and therefore less is known and therefore more speculation can exist. Yeah. Yeah, man, there's so much to talk about when it comes to lost cities. We only hit 10 of them. There's so many more to do. We could probably do a follow-up episode if we wanted. I think maybe you could bring them that time. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't really get to redeem myself then, but that's okay. (laughs) I can't wait to come back on on another topic, though, that's for sure, because I feel like I would probably do a little bit better, but that's okay. Seriously, don't worry about it. I think the listeners are right there guessing along with you. So let's go back through the top 10 real quick, though. Yeah, let's do it. These are the top 10 lost ancient cities. Number 10 is Mesa Verde, Colorado. That's the last one we talked about, discovered by the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. Number nine is the City of Gold, El Dorado. Number eight is Petra, Jordan, the city carved into the mountain. Number seven is Angkor, Cambodia. This is the one that had the hydraulic water system. Number six is Troy. Number five is Atlantis. Mm-hmm. I think that should be number one. But yeah, number four is Pompeii. Number three is Babylon, mm-hmm. as in Babylon AD, starring listener of the show Vin Diesel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> number two is Boo Boo Bee Boo or Villacamba, <laughs> Peru. <laughs> and number one is Machu Picchu, also in Peru. So Peru's got the top two locked down here. Man, I feel like that's just like 
It's just like nepotism amongst the the, the people making <laughs> these <laughs> lists. Yeah, they're just like the Peruid yeah. government is like in the pocket. They're putting the SmackDown being like, you better put them in. There. You better put them. In the <laughs> better be in there. Like, of all the things <laughs> Peru needs to worry about, it's like make sure our lost cities are numbers one and two respectively on your Reader's Digest article. Oh yeah, they're lobbying. They've got diplomats lobbying for that hundred percent. Yeah, we know. 100%. Need some more true crime in your life? I got you, fam. Our newest bonus episode is available right now, only for Tennis Pod Plus members. I was once again joined by Bernadette from the Murderific Podcast to discuss the top tennis most talked about true crime cases that happened in 2021. That would include cases like the uh, infamous Gabby Petito case, among others. But which true crime cases of 2021 were most compelling? Burn and I hash it out on this bonus episode. You should listen right now at tennispod.com slash plus, or if you're an Apple Podcast listener, just tap that subscribe button at the top of our page on Apple. When you subscribe, you'll unlock instant access to more than 40 other exclusive bonus episodes with more added every month. But not only that, you'll also enjoy ad-free access to all of our main weekly episodes like the one you're listening to now. Sign up easily and quickly right now at tennispod.com slash P-L-U-S or on Apple Podcast, and you'll never have to listen to an ad like this one again. These cities may be lost, but by God, what's not lost is your reviews for this show, for Tennis Podcast. Podcast reviews, that's what I'm about to do. It's a thing here. I read reviews every week from listeners just like you. And I'm going to start this week with one on Apple Podcasts. It comes from our friend, dear friend, Squidney08. Squidney08 says, I just discovered this podcast and I love it. The hosts have great chemistry and the topics they cover are so fascinating. It's def going to be a regular listen for me. Black heart emoji. I don't know if I should read into the heart being black there, but I def appreciate your review, Squidney. Even though I know you're just being nice about the chemistry when it comes to a few of my sidekick hosts. <clears throat> Buster. <clears throat> One more here from Katie Ramlow. This one's on Podchaser. Great show. Great host. Great times. I was fascinated as much as I was laughing. And there's always so much to explore. Whether you want to listen about something you love or find new things to love, this is the show to do it. Can't wait to see what's coming. Katie, that is one of the things I love most about doing this podcast is it gets me out of my comfort zone. It gets me talking about all kinds of fascinating topics that I normally wouldn't get to do, like the episode today about lost cities and civilizations. It's cool stuff, so I'm glad people out there like yourself appreciate it. And I also sincerely appreciate that review. And I'd like to encourage listeners out there to write a review for this show. You can do it on Apple, on Podchaser, or on the Good Pods app. Rate us five stars, write a review, And you know I'm going to read it, so make it good. Make it juicy. Make it voluptuous. I can't wait to read it. But I also can't wait to get back to the episode. Let's get to it now. That was a great list, man. That was really well done. Yeah, man, that was a ton of fun. I mean, I had a great time. (laughs) Yeah, at least one of us did well today. But Andrew, uh, man, I don't want you to leave without giving another plug for your show. I know you guys are kind of on a break right now, but you're coming back soon. You told me that earlier. So give the folks at home any sort of preview you can of what's to come or any recent episodes that they should check out as well. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity to do that. So again, yeah, it's Into the Portal. Um, we're on everything. So just hit us up Into the Portal to subscribe to the show or check us out. Yeah, we haven't been on for a little while, but we're really excited to get back at it. And we're going to be coming back uh, talking about some really interesting ancient UFO. We're keep staying ancient, I guess. So some, yeah, some ancient UFO abduction accounts, encounters, everything from some of the most famous ones that have like been relatively debunked, like Alexander the Great, to some super, super obscure stuff all the way up until about the 1600s. So we're, we're reviewing some really, really weird stories like that. That's awesome. I'm excited about it. And then also we have a project in the works with Adam Benedict from the Pine Barrens Institute. If you guys aren't familiar with that, definitely go check him out. He's awesome. Um, A lot of really really great research and writing. We have, uh, we're kind of modeling a show. It's going to be on Into the Portal feed, so it's not going to, don't have to go anywhere else. But it's called Lodge 1908. We have one episode out. I listened to that. We're easing into it. It's going to be a really fun kind of round table. We're bringing on different guests. Nick, we would love to have you on to talk about different things. Let me know when, man. We're taking pieces from everything we love in like pop culture outside of paranormal and trying to like bring it into the the Lodge 1908. 
So we're not taking ourselves as seriously as we take ourselves with the rest of Into the Portal, but still doing a lot of really quality research and stuff. So we have like the um, airing of the paranormal grievances, Frank Costanza style. Dude, I knew I had the right show when I heard the Seinfeld uh, cut in there. (laughs) Yeah, with Frank. And Adam has a lot of beefs with paranormal stuff. So that, that was definitely a needed, uh, needed topic there. And then just like anything else that's weird, it happens to come up in paranormal news. I hope everyone out there has seen the Red Green show. Shout out to Canadian television, because we're kind of modeling it after that. Like Possum Lodge. <laughs> Omni Flunkus Moritati or something like that. When all else fails, play dead. Oh my God, this is getting so Canadian. I can't keep up. Right? I'll have the Red and Green suspenders <laughs> on and everything. <laughs> So yeah, no, that's us into the portal, red, green suspenders. No, we're just, we have a lot of fun, (laughs) but we put a lot of effort into the research and um, talk about a lot of different random topics. So yeah, come hit us up. And it shows like it's quality content, man. The the research is there. You can tell. Thank you. So yeah, I can't recommend it enough. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. Oh yeah. And then I guess I should say too, like, yeah, follow us on Instagram. That's like the only place I'm participating in social media these days, but it's just at into the portal podcast. So that's where you get everything updates from us. So yeah, come follow us. Check the show notes, people. It's there. Andrew, thank you again for coming on. Is there any final warning saying sage advice or anything you want to give to our listeners as it relates to lost cities? Putting you on the spot here. Keep your minds open. I know that's generic, but just like, just seriously be open to things that are categorically disproven to most of the population, because that's where there's the cracks that where where truth can seep into. And there's still things to be enjoyed and found and discovered in those in those cracks. But if you don't, if you just if you discount things outright, we'll never find it. Love that. And also, if you don't have an open mind, you're missing out on a lot of good content out there yeah. in podcasts and <laughs> books and documentaries. Like, it's fun having an open mind when it comes to that stuff because the possibilities become endless. So, yeah, I, I support that. All right, man. Well, I have kept you late enough, so I will let you go. But to the listeners, thanks for listening. Andrew, you're the man. Thanks for so much for having me on, man. Yep. Yeah.